Okay, guys, so we're going to come back to segment two now, and we're going to discuss a case study report of NAD paclitaxel plus gemcitabine in the treatment of a patient with metastatic pancreatic cancer. So I'm going to tell you what happened to me um, just after the new year. So I get a phone call from the emergency room saying we have a consult for you to see. And so this was a woman who was a young grandmother, uh, just 60 years old, great performance status, feeling good, visiting from Philadelphia. And before she left for Nashville, she had been having some abdominal pain and her doc said, well, you know, I can't say anything, let's get a CAT scan when you get back from visiting your family. So she comes to visit her family, develops nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and ends up in the emergency room at my institution. And they do a CT scan, and they see a mass in the pancreas in the unctionate process, and they see three liver metastases. So one thing I'm going to ask you, first of all, in a patient like this, what's your, what's your way of diagnosis? What, Francis, tell me, you know, are you going to biopsy the liver? Are you going to biopsy the pancreas? Are you going to go EUS? What's your thought? Well, she was not obstructed, and first of all, we have to get our symptoms better. If she's nauseous, she's throwing up, whatever's happened, get her pain better. And I would probably go for the liver if I thought it was truly a lesion. I'll get an MRI of the liver. At the time, I would get the MRI dedicated towards the pancreas, and I'd probably go for that. That'd probably be the easiest thing, unless um, there was reasons I couldn't. So that's probably what I would want. I want tissue. Yeah, and that's the biggest piece now. Now, for tissue, um, you bring this up, uh, Gabby, so many times our, our radiologists are used to doing fine needle aspirations, and is that good enough anymore? What, what about getting tissue for patients? So, of course, it depends what the purpose of the tissue is. If you want to prove that it's an adenocarcinoma versus a neuroendocrine tumor, obviously, because that's very important when we have a mass in the pancreas, um, I think that a final aspirate is usually good enough, but if, um, if we do want to answer scientific questions, how much stroma we have, how much inflammatory infiltrate or immune infiltrate, uh, an FNA obviously is not enough. So sometimes we need biopsy, sometimes an FNA is good enough. So, so for her, we had a clinical trial that I was thinking about for her, and a lot of the clinical trials now are requiring core. So I went ahead and did, but I totally understand the, the fine needle aspiration. So we went ahead and did a core biopsy of her liver, which confirmed adenocarcinoma of a pancreatic origin. And she ended up going on clinical trial um, uh, of a new agent. So some other agents that are starting to come forward now for patients are looking at killing pancreatic stem cells. So these are the cells that are chemo resistant. And even though you kill the surrounding tumor cells, they repopulate. Uh, the tumor cells. And so she ended up going on a combination of this experimental agent plus gem nab paclitaxel. And just like you said, it was a very significant symptomatic improvement. Right. Um, she ended up having uh, much less pain uh, and she ended up uh, doing very, very well in the first few doses of her treatment. So my question to you, Ramesh, let's say this lovely lady comes to see you in Arizona. What's your take on treatment and choice of treatment? Um, now, she's been on this clinical trial or before? This is before, so, she, so you get your choice of what oh, you'd okay. like to do for her. So, uh, I mean, we do have a number of mm -hmm. clinical trials for newly diagnosed pancreatic cancer, so um, that would be our first choice. Most of the studies at this point are with gemcitabine, uh, paclitaxel, and a new agent. We have a few of them. Um, Certainly, if you don't have a clinical trial, uh, this is certainly somebody you would treat with an aggressive multidrug regimen, either folfurinox, modified folfurinox, or the NAP paclitaxel gemcitabine regimen. Okay, I'm going to push you. Which one would you pick? Uh, our institutional bias, I think, is um, gemcitabine NAP paclitaxel, and the reason is we are very familiar with it from the very beginning, from the phase one, uh, but that's just a bias. Gotcha. So. Gabi? Um, in my institution, it will be a clinical trial with gemcitabine, NAP, paclitaxel, and plus minus hyaluronidase, the, the agent that basically targets hyaluronic acid, uh, which will require core biopsies, just as you mentioned. So that will be the first choice that we will present the patient in the context, of course, of not doing a clinical trial, which would be for phenox or gem, NAP, paclitaxel. And, Again, it's, it's a very physician-dependent. I will have many of my colleagues that will say you have to have Ophirinox, 
and it will be always me that will say, <laughs> I like Gemini Factory Tech, so I've had very good results with it. Very so good. again, it can go either way, but a clinical trial would be the, the number one recommendation. So if you have access to a new agent, that's the number one choice. Yeah. Francis. I have to go with the crowd. I think, um, <laughs> I think I would try to put the person on a clinical trial. And we have the one with the TH302 as our first comer. But if the person was not willing, and that's a patient's prerogative, no matter how much we can tell them the theory and the science behind this or that, some patients do not want to go on a clinical trial, unfortunately. And I probably then would go with napaxitaxel and gem. And uh, again, I think what you had said, hopefully to get her symptoms better quickly, I have a lot of faith in that gem part of it to alleviate the symptomatology and hopefully the combo to try to get a response. Very good. One thing that I wanted to add, Joanna, I'm sorry to interrupt, is that um, something that may be a little bit cheaper than a PET scan, uh, we did present some interesting data regarding the CA99 marker decline last year at ASCO suggesting that patients that, let's say, you're not sure what the best regimen is for a patient, you can have a very quick look at the CA99 marker decline. And what we've shown that is, if you have a 20% or greater CA99 marker decline, you can actually select the patients that will be one year plus survivors. So um, I think that th there hopefully will have more markers to really guide us, you know, what the best choice is. But... Um, I feel that we have nothing to lose by trying a regimen, seeing if it really works, have a quick look at the month, you know, see what the marker is, what the marker is doing. And you know, if it's not working, we can always change gears. The other one. So uh, that's an excellent point, Gabi. And, and I think what we're seeing here is this sort of, you know, two wonderful regimens that are available to us. And, and, and like Francis was alluding to using one before the other or the other you know, back and forth, and, and just being able to even have those choices is amazing uh, for people who treat pancreas cancer. So.